Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to talk about stereo width and how much you should be using in your mix. Before we begin, just a quick reminder to leave a like down below and hit that subscribe button. This will help me continue to bring valuable content to awesome viewers like you. So to start this video off, I want to talk a little bit about what actually makes something sound stereophonic. And the main ingredients for getting a stereo sound is time and frequency. It only takes a small amount of time variance between the left and right channels, like literally a fraction of a second, and this will give the effect of the sound coming from both sides. We can demonstrate this effect using something like a delay, for instance. And we can even demonstrate this by having two similar oscillators, panning one le to the left and one to the right. And by changing the phase of the first one, you're effectively changing the time, and this gives the effect of stereo. We can also achieve a similar effect by changing the frequency of one of the oscillators. This is a technique you'll hear a lot in things like respaces. Even though our two sounds are almost the same, the small difference in time or frequency is what ultimately gives us the impression that something is stereo. If the sounds playing from both left and right speakers are exactly the same, we would get a mono signal, even with them being panned left and right. But by altering the content between the left and right sides, our brain perceives this as stereo. Now when you're playing different content on both left and right sides, this can cause what's known as phase problems or phase issues. Why is this a problem though? Well, if you always had a perfectly placed stereo system to listen to at all times, then it's really not a problem. But a big portion of how we listen to music still boils down to being at least somewhat mono. If you think about it, even if you have a left and right speaker playing, once you step far enough away from that set of speakers, the sound is hitting your ears in a more linear way or mono way. Phase cancellation is when a sound cancels out another. We can demonstrate this in Serum using our same two sine wave oscillators and changing the phase to be completely opposite of the other. Now we can still somewhat hear the signal, but watch what happens when I sum this to mono. I'm playing the keys right now and we are not hearing anything. Our signal disappears completely. And this is because one waveform is pushing up while the other is pushing down. And when summed together, the sound is literally canceling itself out. Luckily, we have a way to represent this digitally with what's called a phase correlation meter. This meter shows us how far in or out of phase the left and right channels are. One being completely in phase or mono, negative one being completely out of phase or exactly opposite. I'll go ahead and demonstrate this one more time with you guys watching this correlation meter. So now that we know the basics of how stereo content is created, we're going to use our correlation meter to analyze a song from one of my favorite artists, Virtual Riot. I consider his mixes to be extremely clean and pleasing to the ears. For the sake of this video, I'm going to cut everything below 150 hertz because everything below that should be mono anyways. So let's go ahead and have a listen and see what our correlation meter does. So notice how most of the sounds within this song stay between 1 and 0. I would say that the average for this song stays right around 0.5. Sometimes even less. 
Upon occasion, we see the meter shoot below zero, but not very often. Now, let me explain why this is a happy medium and why all your sound should not be going below that zero mark. Let's go ahead and go back to our serum. And now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to change the phase of my second oscillator until we're hitting at about 0.5 on our correlation meter. Right about there. I'm going to refresh my loudness meter and then we're going to see how loud this hits on our peak whenever we're in stereo. We're hitting about 7.9 dB. Now let's sum this down to mono. And refresh. Now we're hitting at 9.1. So this means that there's a roughly a two decibel difference between listening to your sound in stereo versus listening to it in mono. Now I'm going to make the sound much wider on our correlation meter. We're going to go back to stereo. Let's just bring it almost all the way to negative one. Now we're gonna refresh our meters and we are hitting at 7.9 in stereo. But watch what happens when I sum down to mono. 14.6. That means there's literally almost six dB of gain lost whenever this sound is summed to mono. When you're getting such a dramatic change in volume like this, it's going to make your mix reflect very poorly when summed to mono. Your lead will sound quiet and weak compared to other elements simply because you used too much stereo width and it altered your capabilities when it came to balancing your mix. This is why so many producers recommend getting a well-balanced mix in mono before switching to stereo. I'm not saying don't go wild upon occasion and get creative on certain elements, but just be sure that your leads and the main elements in your mix hold up in mono. I personally recommend not going too far past that 0.5 mark on your main elements so that way they are well balanced and powerful even on a mono system and you're not losing, you know, 6 dB or whatever when it gets summed down. And again, this all ties down to phase. But this is just something I think every producer should be aware of. Alrighty guys, that about wraps up this video. I really hope you learned something, and if you are curious or have a question, feel free to comment down below. If you found this video useful, then definitely share it with your other producer friends, and I hope to see you back for the next one. Until then, take care and have an amazing day.